Shabbat Shalom. Ahai by Shem, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hello, brothers, sisters, and sojourners of Israel. This is Dr. Ephraim coming at you again on this Shabbat. Um, I decided to go ahead and, 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 and give the lesson I wanted to to give uh, initially. I thought I decided I was going to do the Haplogroup D uh, presentation, which was which was the um, the Apocalypse of Peter. Um, that particular book um, has always kind of fascinated me because um, of its contents, one, and, and two, it literally almost took the place of Revelation. But I, I truthfully think that the reason it didn't is because it just really scared the hell out of the, the, the canon, you know, no pun intended. Um, you know, and as with the books of Enoch, see, because when you, when you understand how we get the Bible as we know it today, it was a process, right? And there were many, 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 many books. Um, and, you know, I, I, that was one of my lessons. I think it was like last week or week before where I covered a lot of the books that were mentioned by name that were not included in the Bible. So, um, and, you know, one of the things about that is that, you know, the average person, when they hear of a book, that's not in the Bible. First of all, all books that, that didn't make the canon are considered apocryphal books. Even the books of Enoch, I mean, which is to me is just kind of insane for his works to be considered apocryphal because um, he's actually quoted <laughs> in the in the book of Jude. He's quoted from a book that's not even in the Bible, which is just kind of all kinds of crazy. But you know, but that's how it is. You know, if if the book is not in the Bible, people think that it's not true or it doesn't have value. And that's just not true at all. It's just that in itself is not true, right? Um, the Apocalypse of Peter is is is, is widely accepted. Um, again, it was never considered heretical, right? And it contains. See, let me back up just a little bit. It's one thing for someone to, to to give you their opinion of something if they heard something, you know, secondhand, thirdhand, whatever the case may be. But when someone gives you an eyewitness account of something, that gives them a unique uh, uh, perspective and makes them uniquely qualified to speak on what it is they're bringing forth. And that's the point with with the apocalypse of Peter. Now, apocalypse is, is is the end, the end times, okay? That's the end of the world, total destruction, the apocalypse, right? Um, the revelation, to me, apocalypse and revelation are not, are not necessarily synonymous, but the apocalypse of Peter was almost in place of revelation. Um, I don't know, I think um, apocalyptic clip, uh, apocalyptic, uh, uh, books gave the church fathers pause, you know, it scared them, right? Um, so they, they try to shy away, but but here, here, here it is, they're trying to tell a story, you know, in the Bible. So Genesis, and then of course the beginning, Genesis, and then of course you have to have an ending. And of course the ending is Revelation, you know, things to come. Um, the Apocalypse of Peter, while it, 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 it does uh, talk about you know, Christ taking him to showing showing him heaven and hell and, and what goes on there. I mean, yeah, I, I, I could see how, you know, that would scare the um the church fathers. And they would even quote quote from it themselves. Right? So um they say in the late second century, um, they consider the apocalypse of Peter to be holy scripture. Right? And um, it said by the mid fifth century, however, it was clear that the work would not be accepted into the Christian canon. And like I said, it was never condemned as heretical, um, but it began to be included in list of the New Testament Apocrypha, ah, and where it still remains to this day. The disappearance of every single manuscript of the work until recently is probably not coincidental, as there seems to have been an effort to destroy some manuscripts considered controversial, as well as those deemed heretical. And see, and here, and that's the thing too. Now, I, I I will concede that a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that's out there is um you know, 
it's, it's not God's word, you know, um, you know, some people being overzealous, you know, writers, whatever the case may be. Um, and I get it, you know, but, 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 but I think we have to keep things in perspective, you know, and I touched on this when I said, the, you know, about rejecting, um, rejecting the Apocrypha and why I should, I don't, I don't think it should have been included in the King James 1611 version of the Bible in the first place. You know, people were complaining that it was taken out and my my position is that it should have never been put in there in the first place <laughs> you know but not to go you know go into that again um but uh the apocalypse of peter always i always found fascinating um and again it is it's, it's yeshua hamashiach taking our our um one of our favorite apostles peter <laughs> to heaven and hell all right and you say well you know okay just like with enoch right it's like um they uh he he showed them heaven and hell what did, what did he see well well here are some of the things that was that that, that that yeshua showed peter and why i think the the that the church fathers shied away from the apocalypse of peter it was just too much for them it was just too much right um and in the, the apocalypse of peter and you guys can you know google it and you know, see, I'm pretty sure there's a PDF version of it out there, or you can either get get the highlights um, for me, or just you know, Google it if you want, if you desire. Um, but the apocalypse goes into elaborate detail about the punishment in hell for every imaginable type of sinner. <laughs> Whoa, here, quote unquote, punishing angels in dark clothing do their unpleasant work. Some of the listed crimes and penalties include, but are not limited to, blasphemers being hung by their tongue. <laughs> Whoa. And it said, those who pervert righteousness are tormented in a lake of flaming mire. It said, adulterous women who dress in sexually suggestive manner are hung by the hair over the bubbling mire, and men who have sex with them are hung either by their heads or feet over the same hideous swamp. Murderers, they're set in a, a pit of poisonous snakes while the spirits of their victims stand by and watch, declaring that God's judgment is just. <laughs> Whoa. Is, women who cause their babies to be aborted must sit in filth and gore up to their necks while their aborted fetuses send sparks of fire out of their eyes to smite them. Wow. I, I, I find it kind of uh, interesting that, um, wow, this, such, a, such an old scripture is talking about abortion. So, I mean, I guess the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, but, but, but man, we're talking about aborted fetuses from a, an, an old apocryphal type text. Like, wow, We're talking about abortion. Wow. They said, those who persecute the righteous are cast into darkness, beaten by evil spirits and eaten by worms. And it says, people who gave false witness gnaw their own tongues and are tortured by flames in their mouths. And get this. It said homosexuals and lesbians are hurled off a great cliff and then made to climb it again and again and again. Wow. So I guess that means that they just keep falling, keep falling, 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 getting up and going back and falling just continuously. Wow. Okay. Um, it says the reason for the rejection of the apocalypse of Peter, and that might be pretty heavy for a lot of people to digest. And and if and, and what I just read, um, but wait a minute, let's let's back up a little bit. I, I, that described heaven. Let me describe what he what he said. He, um, heaven is right. Yeah, that wouldn't be right. Got to have balance. Um, Okay, it says, the 12 asked Yeshua to show them the appearance of one of our brethren who have passed into the next world. He shows them a magnificent vision of two men facing east toward God. Their radiance is so magnificent that the author admits he is lost for words uh, specifically described are people whose bodies are, quote, whiter than snow, yet ruddier than any rose, 
They possess long, curly hair interwoven with flowers that resemble a rainbow. They are astonishingly beautiful. The earth blooming with everlasting flowers, fruits, and spices. People wearing shiny clothes made of light like the angels. The glorious residents joining in songs of praise to God, taking turns yet singing with one voice. Now, Enoch spoke on that. That, that lines up as Enoch said that. He said that, 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 that the Most High sits on, a, on his throne of glory and there are angels that sit around him 24-7 singing holy, holy, holy. Um, he said the place is described as the dwelling of righteous men who are also high priests. Hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah, that would be uh, heaven. So I gave you heaven and hell uh, by Peter's uh, words. So it says the reason that the church rejected the apocalypse of Peter uh, from canonical from canonical scriptures is not clear. My personal position is that that's some heavy stuff. You know, people hanging by their tongues. They didn't talk about. There's actually people down there hanging by their genitals. There's all kind of stuff going on. So I mean. I, yeah, I could see that, um, but I think what what intrigued me about it though is is that the fact that the apocalypse of Peter was literally almost in place of revelation. So that's how, you know, that's how close it was. I think I read somewhere where it missed it by like one vote or something like that, right? So we almost had the apocalypse of Peter in place of revelation. I mean, I couldn't even imagine that, but but that you know that the the thought of that always you know kind of really intrigued me or whatever. And um, so, yeah, it says uh, the 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 apocalypse of Peter is noticeably tamer in many respects from the book of Revelation, which was ultimately accepted, but not without difficulty. Right. If the works original form as distinct from the Ethiopic version of the text included the prayer of Jesus, implying a doctrine of universal salvation, uh, that could be a reason for being treated with suspicion. Basically, that no matter all the sinners, everyone that was in hell, basically, that they were going to come, he was going to come and get them all. So universal salvation, salvation for everyone, no matter what you did. I mean, yeah, okay, you went to hell, but don't worry, I'm still coming to get you. Like, uh, okay, I don't know about that one. <laughs> so universal salvation might have kind of, kind of, kind of, might have, might have did that too. So um, another theory is that it might have been associated with the gospel of Peter. Um, the Ackman discovery found these texts together, and this text was overtly heterodox. Hmm. Other possibilities include that its ap apostolic origin could not be adequately attested, and that apocalypses were generally looked upon with suspicion by church leaders, although certainly not by Christian leaders and hearers generally. So they found that that text to be overtly heterodox. Hmm. Okay, let's see what that means. Heterodox. If it's a root for uh, heresy, I, I get it. But let's see. Het, heterodox. Uh, heterodox. What does that mean? Not conforming with accepted or orthodox standards or beliefs. Got it. Yeah, I, I could see where, you know, the, 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 the apocalypse of Peter would just, is just like so far out, like, oh man, like, wow, you know, probably really scary, probably scared him, someone probably didn't believe it, you know, um, but I think in the end, I think it, I think it, it was supposed to, matter of fact, I know it, it, it ended the way it was supposed to with Revelation, um, because knowing what we know now about the apocalypse of Peter, I just don't, I just don't see that taking the place of Revelation, <laughs> you know, so that's that but um yeah you know you guys obviously y'all can go ahead and um and uh google it if you want any more information on it it's out there um i actually have the apocalypse of peter on pdf um you know take it for what it is i mean you know or not you know this it doesn't really matter i mean it, it's all you study study to show yourself approved right so I, I, you know, that's that's it. You know, um, I use my spirit of discernment, and the gifts I've been blessed with, because I, I pretty much know what's of the Most High and what isn't. You know, he'll he'll let me know. He won't let me go down that quagmire of 
just, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, so, but anyway, that's it. I wanted to do that. Um, so there it is, you know, the apocalypse of Peter. Like I said, next week, I'll probably go ahead and get ready for that, uh, have the group D uh, lesson I told you all about, but, um, you know, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, you know, enjoy your Shabbat. And until next time, this is Dr. Ephraim saying hi, everybody. Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom.